Hey everyone! At this point in video production, you will have produced your very own educational video for your students. And if you have, congratulations! This is a significant accomplishment and one you should be proud of. Now in this video, I'll show you how I make my learning guides that accompany my videos. These learning guides are just very simple activities for the students to do to help them remember what's in the video. You don't have to use them, but I strongly recommend using some kind of activity or assessment, preferably formative, to help your students learn what's in your video. Okay, let's get to work. Okay, so here I'll show you what my learning guides are like, but like I said, you can make yours however you want and whatever kind of assessments or assignments that you use to make sure that the students are actually viewing your video is up to you and will likely depend on the nature of your students and the nature of the material you're teaching. Now what you're seeing here is the explain everything presentation for my double fertilization video. And right here you're seeing the visuals layout for the double fertilization part of the video. That's page one of seven. On the next page, that's the page where I have my recording for this part of the video. And this is at the end of the timeline. So you're seeing everything that will have appeared on the page by this point in the video. On the next page, I have the visuals layout for the C development part of this video. And on the page after that, I have the recording for that page of the video. And that's kind of how I set my Explain Everything presentations up. I have a visual layout, then I have the recording that responds to that visuals layout, then I have the visuals layout for the next page, and then the recording for the next page. So the learning guide is these last three pages, this one, this one, and this one. And there are two basic parts to the learning guide for each video. The first is essentially kind of like a skeletal notes, right? It's basically, and this is the learning guide page for the double fertilization part of the video. It's basically just some of the visuals on that page minus, or it's, it's all of the visuals on that page minus what I want the students to draw. So if we compare this page to what the page looks like at the end of this part of the video, you can see that there's a lot of stuff on the page that's not present in the learning guide. And that's the part that I want the students to actually draw. Because I find that when students draw what's in the videos, they remember it better. This skeletal notes part of the learning guide is kind of analogous to students taking notes in class except they can pause the video, write down whatever they want to write down, and then resume the video when they're ready. Or alternatively, they can just view the entire video and fill in the learning guide when they're done. Now you'll notice that there are some things that are already in this page of the learning guide, and that's because I don't want my students to spend time drawing these things. And in this case, that's because they've already drawn these in previous videos, but it could also be that you just don't think your students drawing something would be of that much learning value for them. So I try to keep that in mind when deciding what I want my students to draw and what I don't. I also try to be conscious of their time and not have too much missing from the page because if they spend too much time drawing, they might get discouraged. So it's kind of a fine line you have to walk there, but drawing does help them remember. So in this case, if we compare this page to the actual page of the video, it looks like they're going to be drawing this diagram down here, some labels of the flower and some labels of the pollen grain and some stuff about the vegetative nucleus. And that's really all of the new content for this video. So I do want them to spend some time drawing that stuff. Now, if we look at the seed development part of the video, you can see that there's a lot over here. And if we compare that to the corresponding page in the learning guide, 
you can see that there's a lot of stuff missing over there, so that's the stuff that I want them to draw. Notice I also left in the images here, and I pretty much always do that because students aren't going to really draw images. And if they try to, it would probably take them a while. So I always leave in any images that I use here. So that's the first part of the learning guide, basically just kind of a skeletal notes of all the pages that appear in the video. Now the second part is just several questions designed to make sure that they actually just remember and understand what was in the video. And so all of the information needed to answer these questions I make sure is in the video. So really all they have to do to answer these questions correctly is view the video and remember what's in it. So I'm really kind of addressing the bottom of Bloom's pyramid here. I'm just making sure that the students remember and understand what's in the video. I'm not asking them to apply their knowledge or analyze anything or evaluate anything or anything like that. I'm going to spend class time doing that because those tasks are more difficult and students are more easily frustrated by them. So here I'm just asking them to remember what's in the video. So before my students actually view this video, I will give them a printout of this learning guide. And in this case, the printout will be three pages, the double fertilization page, the seed development page, and the questions page. And they'll have to fill out this learning guide before coming to class. And when they're in class, I'll just simply check to make sure that the students did it. And I'll throw a few points their way if they did. I'm not going to correct everything because frankly, I don't have time for that. But what I do do is I let the students get into groups after I've checked their work and check their answers with each other to make sure that the answers are more or less correct. Now you may choose to grade this if you want to, but um, I don't really have that kind of time given the number of students in some of my classes. So in order to print these pages out, you actually have to export them as images to your computer, but I'll show you how to do that a bit later. So for now, I'm just going to show you how I actually make this learning guide. And it really doesn't take that long at all, maybe five to 10 minutes to make the pages for the corresponding pages in the video and write the questions. Okay, so let me show you how I make the learning guide page that corresponds to the double fertilization part of my video. Now the learning guide pages are basically just copies of what your video looks like at the end of that page. So, well, it's really a copy plus you erase some stuff and put some text up here. That's really all it is. So to make this learning guide page, the first step is just to select the page that you want to make a learning guide for. And I usually select the page with the recording on it because that will look like what's actually in the video. And I will duplicate that hitting this button here. And I will duplicate it without the recording. And Explain Everything has created an identical page right here next to my page with the recording on it. So I'm going to go to that page. Actually, while I'm here, I'm going to do the same thing for the C development page of my video as well. I'm just going to hold the Apple Pencil on that. It highlights it, and I'm just going to duplicate that page without the recording. OK, so now I have my two pages, this one and this one, that will eventually become two pages of my learning guide. OK, so let's go to the double fertilization page. Now, after duplicating the page, the next thing I do is just erase anything that I want the students to draw. So I'm going to erase this stuff because I want them to write that down. Erase that too. I want them to draw these labels, so I'm going to erase those. Okay, I think I'll leave all this in. I want them to draw these labels, really everything down here. I want them to draw, so something like that. Let's get rid of this label too. Okay, 
So I've erased everything that I want them to draw in. Now the next thing I do is make a text box just so I can title this page of the learning guide and also just to communicate to myself and the students that when they're looking at this page they're looking at part of a learning guide. So I'm going to title this page learning guide Maybe just go back here. Learning guide for double fertilization. Okay. And I'm going to make that a little bigger. So I'm going to select all and make the font maybe 36 that looks good and I use the Lato font you can use whatever font that you want okay but I think that's fine and I usually put this right up here at the upper left just to kind of have a title for this page of the learning guide it also makes it easy for students to go back and find information when they're studying for an exam if you have things nicely titled in the learning guide. You can also put some questions that you want the students to answer right on the page of the learning guide and you can even mention them in the video and I do that sometimes I just didn't happen to do it in this video. Okay so let's make the learning guide for the C development part of the video. Okay, and this is eventually the page that's going to become a learning guide page. You can see that it's a duplicate of my page with the recording on it. So I'm simply once again going to erase everything that I want the students to write in. Okay, I think that looks fine. And then once again, I'm going to put a title above this page. Now, it's going to be very similar to the title for the double fertilization page, so I think I'm just gonna save myself some time and copy that from here. Copy. And paste that here and rename it learning guide for seed development. Okay, and once again, that's just going to make it a lot easier for your students to find information in their learning guide when they're studying for an exam or a quiz or something. So you can see that this doesn't take very long to make at all. Now for the next part, I have my questions and I have a title up here as well. This title is in the context of my course, but of course your title will be different. And I just have several questions here and you can just write these questions in using the text box feature and explain everything. Now, if you already have questions written out in Microsoft Word or another word processing program, you can import them and just copy them into here. You don't have to retype them into explain everything. Now, these questions are relatively easy questions. They really address the bottom two parts of Bloom's learning pyramid. And if you don't remember what they are, they're just remembering and understanding. So feel free to look up Bloom's pyramid if you don't remember it. But I'm just making sure that they actually remember and understand what's in the video. I'm not asking them to apply what they're learning or analyze anything in the context of what they're learning or anything like that. I'm just making sure that they remember what's in the video. I'll address those higher order or higher in the pyramid learning outcomes in class usually. So I have a flipped classroom and 
I have my students view these videos before they come to class so they come armed with a baseline level of knowledge that they can then use to apply and analyze problems that we work on in class. So that's how my videos kind of fit into the flow of my courses, but you can choose what's best for you and your students as far as when they're viewing the videos and when they're completing the learning guides. Now, when you're running these questions, it's not a bad idea to have your learning objectives open just to make sure that the questions address your learning objectives. So once you've made the pages for your learning guide and explain everything, and here there are these three pages, even though I've already kind of duplicated them over here just to show you how I do it, um, now you have to export these as images so you can print them out and give them to your students to fill in. If you want to have your students do this on a computer or if they have a tablet, they can fill them out on those devices as well. But I find that not all students can do that, so I prefer to print them out and have them actually draw on the paper of the learning guide. So to export these as images, I'm going to click the, the share button right up here in the upper right hand corner, this box with an arrow coming out of it. And instead of exporting as a video, which is what you do if you want to work on your video for video editing, which I'll show you how to do later, you're going to export as an image. But before I do that, I don't want to export all the pages as nine different images. I just want to export the pages of my learning guide. So I'm going to select specific slides to share. That'll bring up this menu here. And I'm going to hit deselect all and then go down and look for my learning guide pages. So those are the last three here. So I'm going to hit each of those, hit done. And now I'm only going to export images of those three slides. Okay, so then I'll hit image and I'm going to, I think, airdrop this to my computer. And sometimes when you hit airdrop, it takes like 10 to 20 seconds for your tablet to find your computer. So I'm just gonna wait for that to happen. See, there it is. So it sometimes takes a while to show up. So just be patient. Then I'm going to select my computer. And I don't know if you heard that beep, but that was the file showing up on my laptop. And you can see that explain everything confirms that it sent the images to my computer. So now I can open them up on my computer and I can print them out and give them to my students. I usually put two images to a page and I do front and back. So I'm only using one piece of paper to print four pages of a learning guide. So it's just a way to save paper. Now, if printing these pages isn't feasible for you, then you can always just have your students draw what's in your video in any old notebook. I think that has almost as much learning value, and I think it's a perfectly fine way for students to draw what's in the video. So it's really up to you, it just depends on how much resources you have for printing and whether it's feasible or not to actually print all this and give them to your students. Okay, so at this point, start thinking about what kind of assignments or assessments you want to use to make sure that your students are learning from and not just watching your videos. Then produce that learning guide or whatever you decide to use to accompany your video. This brings us to the end of the production phase of video production. Next up is post-production, where I'll teach you how to use some video editing programs to make your video look and sound a lot more professional. See you then.